Now, dinosaurs ruled our planet for over 165 million years, and some walk on our planet even today. Well, at least some of their descendants. Our modern birds evolved from what used to be a scary group of meat-eating dinosaurs we know as theropods. It all started during the Mesozoic era, about 250 million years ago, when a group of creatures called dinosaurmorphs roamed Earth. They didn't look like those dinos that might have come to your mind, like Brontosaurus or T-Rex. But that's the group dinosaurs evolved from. These creatures walked on all fours and were as big as house cats. They didn't look as friendly, though, considering they were more like weird lizards with long, thin limbs. As you'd expect, this group wasn't exactly at the top of the food chain. But they were really fast and agile, which helped them survive. Over time, they adapted and started walking upright, so their legs were under their bodies instead of out to their sides. And over time, dinosaur morphs started growing long tails and bigger leg muscles. Their necks became stronger to support the new position they were in, and they even got extra hip bones that helped them move faster and more efficiently. That's when dinosaurs came on the scene, somewhere between 240 and 230 million years ago. Their name comes from the word dinosauria, which means terrible lizard. The oldest dinosaur fossils belong to these fellows that lived in Argentina. This one is even older, but we're still not sure if it's a real dinosaur or its relative, dinosaur morph. Now, considering the size of their ancestors, dinosaurs weren't large at the beginning, more like dogs or horses. There weren't many species back then, so if you could go back to that time, you'd see a bunch of reptiles walking around on two legs. But as time went by, they adjusted to different environments, and we got more interesting groups. For example, small and fast predators, like this guy. They all fall into the category of archosaurs, a group that also includes pterosaurs. Yup, their name may not imply it, but these are not dinosaurs. As some dinosaur morphs evolved into dinosaurs, they got certain advantages, like arms. They could do much more thanks to that. Some could catch prey using their hands. Others could grasp branches. Now, the freedom they got by moving their arms later helped some of them evolve into birds and start flying. Dinosaurs were probably warm-blooded. It means they could stay active all the time. They didn't depend on the conditions around them like, for example, reptiles do. The latter are cold-blooded, and they have to rely on their surroundings to regulate their body temperature. Dinosaurs didn't rule the animal kingdom for the first tens of millions of years of their existence, either. Crocs were at the top of the food chain back then. Then the Jurassic period hit, and new kinds of dinosaurs showed up, like those giant plant-eating dinosaurs. For example, seropods. You know them. Dinos with long tails and necks that could eat plants at different heights, such as Brachiosaurus. Allosaurus is another famous dino from that time you will probably recognize. Spikes on the tail, bony plates on the back, you know, good old Stegosaurus. The Jurassic period was that time when dinosaurs started to get bigger and bigger. Then the Cretaceous period came along, and finally, these magnificent beasts reached the peak of their fame. That was the time when the mighty T. rex took the throne and got to the top of the food chain. T. rex probably lived around 28 years, but it reached adult size really fast. Now, it wasn't easy to survive back then. T. rex falls into the category of tyrannosaurs, and scientists have found out those fellas were fierce even when they were at a pretty young age. They discovered a fossil of a teenage tyrannosaur that was 75 million years old, and it had two baby dinosaurs inside its stomach. Mm. They realized that when tyrannosaurs were at a young age, they went for small dinosaurs, such as these guys, their dino cousins. As they grew older, they started taking on bigger challenges, like those peaceful giant dinosaurs that like to hang out with their group and eat plants. But large predators weren't the only ones that would have made you shiver with fear. That was also the time when fast and smart creatures called velociraptors show up. They weren't some scaly dinosaurs that would catch their prey using those claws in the shape of sickles, like shown in the movies. Their bodies were covered in feathers, and they would grow up to 100 pounds, which is about the size of a wolf. And to bust one more myth, they didn't hunt in packs. Velociraptors probably preferred to hunt solo and use their claws not to slash their prey, but to clutch it. 
T-Rex and Velociraptor fall into the group called theropods. We mentioned them at the beginning, the creatures today's birds evolve from. But even though Velociraptors were covered with feathers, they still couldn't fly. Their wishbones weren't shaped in a way to support flying, and their arms were too short. Maybe it was better that way because during the Cretaceous period, flying dinosaurs called pterodons were the ones that took over the skies. Things had been going really great for dinosaurs until one unfortunate day 66 million years ago when an asteroid hit our planet. It's not that the asteroid itself erased all the dinosaurs right away, but it caused changes in the environment, which made it way harder to survive. At that time, about 75% of animals living on our planet went extinct. The asteroid was really big. When it hit Earth, it created a giant crater in the Yucatan Peninsula and sent a lot of debris into the atmosphere, which blocked the sun right away. For months, dense clouds of dust blocked sunlight. Our home planet was darker and colder than before, which wasn't good for plants. Creatures that ate plants couldn't survive those changes either. So it all turned into a chain reaction when most of the ecosystem collapsed. When the dust finally cleared, all those greenhouse gases that had formed after the impact made temperatures go way higher than they had been in a really short period of time. All land animals that weighed more than 55 pounds were gone. But not everything disappeared. There were fewer plants, but they were less affected than animals. All because their pollen and seeds can survive really messed up conditions for a longer time. So what we have today is basically the seeds we were left with back then. After the asteroid hit, flowering plants dominated our planet. All non-bird dinosaurs went extinct too. Some species survived as birds. At first, those brave survivors were small. But later, birds evolved to bigger sizes. Now, there's a study that says that if the asteroid had slammed into some other spot on Earth, the fate of many creatures and plants would have been very different. If the rock had fallen maybe a couple of minutes later, it would have hit deeper waters. Less rock would have vaporized and risen to block out the warmth and light coming from the sun. In that scenario, we'd probably still have dinosaurs around. For example, Triceratops was one of the last dinos that had nothing in common with birds. If the asteroid had missed our planet, we would see some of them still roaming around. But since evolution never rests, maybe in a little bit different form. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.